Hello and welcome again to another instalment of my Source Vintage YouTube channel. Sometimes in this job you stumble across something that's just that little bit extra special. Da -da -da -da. A leather cigar case. And I hear you saying, what? A leather cigar case? This isn't just any old cigar case. Let me show you. This is from the late Victorian period and it belonged to a soldier. And the soldier has written down all of his postings on the cigar case. So you have a story of his postings between 1891 and 1904. How cool is that? So, what I like about pieces of military is that they normally contain bits of information which allow you to trace them back to who they belong to, who made them in the case of a, a piece of trench art. Um, what they experienced, where they were posted, etc. So I've been doing some digging on this particular item and this is what this video is about. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I found out. After initially being led down a, a blind alley by my own stupidity, I didn't look closely enough at the text on the, the cigar case. I thought it said W.R. Francis. So that was what I was basing my searches on. However, after looking at it under a loop, I found that it was W.M. Francis. It's a W with a very small M with a squiggle underneath. Almost like it's uh, an abbreviation of the first name, which in this case it was William. This case belonged to William Francis of the Norfolk Regiment. Now, normally these searches are a little bit easier because you have a service number, but in this case I didn't. So. I did a little bit of digging. I found a Norfolk Regiment Facebook group, so I contacted them. They came back and said that because of the dates of the postings, the length of the postings, that they thought it was a second battalion that he was part of. They also said that assuming that he joined after the age of 15 and retired before the age of 50, they could put his birth year somewhere between 1854 and 1876. So using that date range, I managed to find four possibilities. 2805 William Francis, born 1873. 8348 William Francis, born 1873. 3774 William Francis, born 1875. 9348 William Francis, born 1873. But still, I wasn't certain which one it was. I then found that there was a Norfolk Regiment Museum in Norfolk, funnily enough. So I contacted them. They got back to me and said that they had limited access to information because of lockdown. But they'd had a look through the information they could access and they'd found a personal biographical account of a William Francis who served in India at a similar time. They, they weren't sure if it might be the same one, so they got it transcribed and they sent it over to me. I had a, a read through and unfortunately it wasn't. The dates just didn't match up or nor did the, the cities and towns. Nevertheless, a really interesting read. I mean, it really went into detail about the conditions in India at the time, what they experienced, really, really cool. So I, I went back to my ancestry sites, determined to find out which of these four William Francis was my man. And then I struck gold. William Francis, born 1873, of 12 Marketplace Road, Great Yarmouth. Enlisted in the 2nd Battalion on 23rd of February 1891, aged just 18 years and 4 months. And in total, the records show that he served 23 years. He retired on the 16th of April 1914, aged 41 years. All of the dates in, in the records matched those on the cigar case. It just brings everything to life. His records also showed that he had quite the rise through the ranks during his service. He went to Lance Corporal, Corporal, Sergeant, Colour Sergeant, before finally reaching Acting Sergeant Major. It also shows that he married Minnie Gertrude Johnson at the Church of St John in Bombay, India on 21st of February 1905. In looking at his records, <laughs> you can see how long he served in India. I'm not sure where he found the time to meet his wife, but I've narrowed it down 
to sometime between 4th of November 1903, 15th of May 1904. So he was first posted to India on the 9th of November 1894 and he served eight years, 359 days there. He then headed home and he had six months and 11 days at home before he went back out to India for an additional nine years in 336 days. Quite incredible, really. It also shows that he was awarded a certificate of musketry on 23rd of February 1900, as well as a silver medal for long service and good conduct. And this is as far as my research has got, really. As far as I can tell, after completing his service, William spent his later years in Totland on the Isle of Wight, and he sadly passed away in 1925, aged just 53 years. I can't find he had any children. My goal is to try and keep digging and to find a living relative. I've managed to reunite other pieces of military with family members before, so I'm gonna try my best with this piece, but I'm not holding out hope really because it's about any children. I'm not sure there'll be any living relatives. I'll give them a best shot, and if I do find anything, then of course I'll let you all know. So that's it. I hope you found this interesting. This is definitely one of my favourite recent finds. If you want to see more interesting finds and you like antiques and vintage etc then please subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified. I also write a blog every Monday which you can find at my website source-vintage.co.uk. Please head over there, subscribe to that. I write about again interesting finds, places I've visited, I do reviews, talk about trade, and also at that website, you'll find bits and pieces that I'm selling. Go and have a look if you're interested. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for joining me again, and until next time, stay safe. Keep buying those antiques. Thanks a lot.